já vám přeji krásné odpoledne. Vidíte, že vám všem, kteří mě slyšíte, i vám všem, kteří nás vidíte, a samozřejmě i vás, kteří se díváte na živý stream právě z gongu, z této stage, kam jsme vybrali opravdu ty nejlepší řečníky z celého Melting Potu. Viděli už jste nějaké přednášky na Melting Potu? Ano, ano. Doufám, že jste spokojení, že se vám to pěkně skládá do nějaké té mozaiky, kterou si odnesete z tohoto roku. Já, co si všímám, tak řečníci často mluví o zvědoma, zvědomování věcí, o tom, že svět se možná mění, možná ne, možná je chaotický, možná pro někoho může přinášet nějaké krize, možná nás ty krize posunou, ale v každém případě je důležité si uvědomovat, čím procházíme, vnímat nějak ten svět a zvědomovat také, za co jsme zodpovědní a za co zodpovědní nejsme. A často také řečníci se blíže či dále dostanou k tomu, že musíme začít u sebe. A co jsou ty naše hodnoty? A jedna z nich je určitě zdraví i naše vyváženost s psychikou, že psychika se odráží v našem těle a podobně. A kdo jiný by o tom měl promluvit, než náš další milý host, člověk, který publikuje, je překládán po celém světě, vycházejí jeho knihy, audioknihy, pomohl tisícům lidí po celém světě. A tím je Rudy Rigr Dálke. Welcome. Hello. It's great to have you here. Welcome to Ostrava, welcome to Melting Pot. So, uh, do I have right information? You will be talk about our responsibility for our health? I hope, yes. <laughs> okay, great. So, so enjoy it, thank please. You. So, welcome everybody. Dobrý den. Ahoj. So, but it's... Now finish with Czech. <laughs> I, I thank you for inviting me to introduce this, for in my eyes, very important theme, self-responsibility for our health. I think it's one of the most important things in medicine that we can realize that it's our opportunity to help us, help ourselves. The word is wonderful. Responsibility, the ability to respond. So, do I have to wait for the translation? No. Yeah. Uh -huh, okay. The ability to respond. So there are so many complications, confrontations, dangers in life, so many tricks life plays on us, but still we have our responsibility for that. In my opinion, I'm a doctor since 40 years now this year, there's no illness, no symptoms, we have not a responsibility for it. So it's so very important to understand this and to make it easier for us to have a more healthy life. It's also very important to learn the rules of life. the rules of the game. So if you play any game, soccer, uh, I don't know, whatever game, Monopoly, you have to learn the rules before, otherwise it can't make you happy. You will not have success in this game. And this is the same with Leela, the cosmic game, like the Indians call life. We have to learn these rules. And the most important of these rules is or this laws is the law of the shadow. We often have such a good will and we want so much something very wonderful, beautiful, healthy and end up in the complete opposite. And behind this is the law of the shadow. So look at this example. No, we don't have it here yet. Could we have the picture? First picture? Yeah. If you look at this, it was in the entrance hall of a hotel. And when I walked in there first time, it was newly built, everything, very Christian people who built the hotel, the owners, and they made a wood carver make this wonderful holy bishop. And if I saw it, I couldn't even help laughing. Look at the shadow of this situation. Yeah, look at the shadow. 
There you can see who is also on board in this hotel. The devil, Satan, or how do you want to call him? This is a situation we have always to think of. The shadow is always coming with every intention, with every motivation. And we have a tendency in life to go directly for the very positive, constructive, for the light, the enlightenment. But if you do things like positive thinking, like affirmation work, or ordering the universe, or something like this, you will always have a shadow. And this shadow becomes even more dangerous if you, don't, if you are not aware of the shadow. So, what is now going on? It doesn't work anymore. Like in the trial we had. Next isn't coming. I don't know why. Like some... No! We, but now it's too, too fast. We make a little game together. You look at this monster mask, this dark thing, and you need not be afraid, not a bit. I can promise you if we start with this shadow symbol, you will end up in the light. Just look at this and don't blink with your eyes. Just stare at it in the middle where you see such a small red point, the nose of the monster. You fix that. I get out of your way. You just look there and you stay looking there, even if it changes. And then you will wonder what's happening then if it changes. It takes only 10 minutes and you need not at all be afraid. If there are tears coming a little bit, doesn't matter. It's a theme quite near to crying, this shadow principle. So what you see there, of course I don't know, but I know because I know the second most important law of resonance. Most of you will have seen a light figure like Jesus Christ. If we do this same exercise in a different culture, I did it often in India or Bali, then people don't see Jesus Christ, they see Krishna or Buddha, a figure they associate with light. One dentist out of 180 Swiss dentists saw Che Guevara, because Che Guevara was a light figure for him. So you hopefully didn't see Che Guevara, but some light figure of your life. This is resonance. You see what is in, you, in your world picture, a symbol for light. But that it happened at all has something to do with the polarity, the law of polarity, because there's nothing. It's just an empty PowerPoint. Even if you know this, you can't change it. I try to go back, but really difficult with this system, which doesn't work. Maybe I could have another one. This is really disturbing <laughs> if it goes on like this. There were so many technicians. Can help us one? Pardon, tak teď nám tady vstoupily asi nějaké mocnosti. Jak tam byl ten stín, tak pojďme opravit i ten prezenter a jestli můžeme tedy něco udělat s tím překladem. It really doesn't work at all now. So, if one of the technicians could come and change the situation. No, this is completely wrong now. It takes minutes to react and then it's not working at all. Sorry for that. But it is so still I hope your presentation. someone is helping me with this. And it would be much easier for you to have the pictures with it. But with this, it doesn't work. Please, there were so many technicians. They would now be helpful. No, no one dares. Sorry for that. So we go on. If they are, have not the courage to change this or the power, it's up to them. Okay. We have a tendency, if we look at something, 
that we want only part of it. The other part we suppress. And this is really what we do with everything. If you take the yin-yang symbol, we don't want to have the yin and the yang at the same power. In this society of masculinity, we suppress the female part. But then it isn't out of the world, but it becomes part of the shadow. And then it becomes really dangerous. And this is what happens everywhere. We want to do the very best, and it comes the opposite out. It's a really dangerous situation. Nobody wants to become ill, but so many people are ill. Frankly speaking, almost everybody is ill in this society. And this has something to do with the shadow effect. The shadow is always part of an illness, of a symptom, or something like this. Could you maybe organize this? It would be so much better for everybody if we had these pictures. Can't imagine. So, we have to confront the shadow. The second most important law is the law of resonance. That means we have the partners we deserve, the partners we choose, partners we have resonance to. We have also the politicians we have resonance to. This is very painful at the moment, I think, but it's our resonance to experience this. And so nobody has an illness where he, to which he has no resonance. This is really very important to understand. Now, they do something from... You have this again, but it would be easier, or functioning well if I could choose this, so it doesn't have. I have such a presenter, but it's in this other room. So, um, there's another, a third law, the law of the beginning. You can look at the start of anything. That's why the doctors are asking you, how did it start? When was the first time you had the migraine? When is it coming now all the time? So from the beginning, you can also see what energies are in there. And if we have these three laws in mind, it's much easier to understand what is going on. So um, I hope also without the pictures, this gave you an idea. There's no part of our life where the laws are not playing a big part although we don't learn these laws at school or at university, we are just suffering from them. We are victims of these laws if we, if we don't know them. So better we learn them. The next important thing to become healthy, to have good health, is that we know what is behind the problems, that we understand them. If you want to change them, we have first to understand them. This is a very important step on this way to become healthy. And to find this, the law or the, the level behind, you, we have to look at the patterns behind, the archetypes. It's like Platon said, behind everything is an idea. So we have to go to the level of the ideas to really heal somebody, to do real prevention, and to make our wishes work. They have to fit to these archetypes or patterns behind all this. This is also very important. For example, if you have someone who has infections all the time, and one cold comes after the other cold and has chronic infections, it's very important to understand what is the idea behind infection. And if you know that the, the immune system is fighting some germs, some bacteria or viruses or things like this, now, so can, there's no reason in producing some of the pictures out of the blue. You mo it would be much better you give me a presenter working and I can do this. This is just irritating now. <laughs> Please stop it. And 
I mean, it must be possible and easily and still have some time to change the situation. They fix it? Perfect. Maybe we have a new battery or something. Very complicated. <laughs> Next, next picture. This doesn't ah, work. This doesn't work. But this will be present. Okay, then go back. One picture back, some pictures back. And we try it again. Back. 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 Okay. Back. Ještě? One back. Ještě jeden zpátky? <laughs> okay. This. Now you know the game already. You try not to see the light figure afterwards, and they go one further. So you know there's an empty PowerPoint coming next. And please go further. You, pr yeah. So you see it again, I think. It always works like this with polarity, with the shadow. You can't take it out. It's always there. The next picture. And the next, until we see something, you will see the yin yang hopefully soon. If I manage this. <laughs> and you know the yin yang already, I talked about it. So, please. And if we live up to this, then we could stay in good health. But if we suppress one part of it, this part goes to the shadow. No, they don't. They can't do it. Okay, we give up on this. We look on this, come back to this inflammation situation. Somebody has one cold over the other. And... Ah, okay. You see, you see a picture with no. lots of Mami. devils on there. If you go before, then you see a picture with a lot of angels. This would be the right series, yeah. So if you look at this first, you only see the, the angels. But if you look closer, then you see, of course, there are also devils. And now, one further, go on with the next picture, you will see this. And the next. So, we make a game for resonance. If you look at this horse rider, then you have a choice. You see him coming or riding away from you. Who sees him coming? Could you show up? Yeah. Who sees him riding away? It's also some people. What's, what's, that? what's going on there? We see the same picture and 90% see the opposite of 10%. By looking at the same picture, this has something to do with resonance. Yeah. Some people even see both coming and going. Who is that? Can you show me? These are the realists. You can't make politics with them if they see both sides. For politics, you need people who see only one part, and then they can fight. So how come that someone sees coming this horse rider and the other seeing him riding away? It has something to do with our inner feeling our attitude to life. The optimists see, of course, there's a horseman coming to them. That's the view they have on life. The pessimists see him riding away as everything is going away from them. But I don't want to say that optimism is better than pessimism. For example, in respect to a atomic energy is much better pessimism. It's very expensive, the optimism of the Germans, for example, or the French or the Russians. Incredibly stupid that optimism and in the end very very expensive so we need not make a choice between optimism and pessimism but we can see we have an attitude a resonance to life and after this we see life and we make our decisions we say this guy's coming and if we, this, or others say it's riding away if he would make a uh, election about this or we find in, a democra democ in democracy a solution, then we would say, okay, 90% he is coming, 10% he is riding away, so he is coming. 
But it's not true, for the 10% is still riding away. So we have our resonance, and we can see this easily. Now think about resonance, you don't have any problems at all. You know resonance already. So let's see the next picture. If you look at this guy, and you imagine he is looking for the love of his life, the woman he wants to be, become happy with, and you are in chief of the partnership organization of Ostrava, or even Czechian or Europe, with whom would you present him? He doesn't want a woman who is like him, very similar. I mean, this would be tasteless in his situation. But um, he wants someone who is fitting to him. And this is very difficult, so we make it much easier for you. You just look for a partner dog for him. It's even enough if you have the race, you find out the race of the dog. So what do you think he needs as a dog? Show us the next picture, you will see it. And the next picture, both together, you can see there's a resonance between these two. And they are not similar, but they are in a sort of resonance. So the next picture, and you look into the eyes of this lady, and then the next picture, and you see the eyes of this dog, and we see both together now, and you will again realize there's some resonance. It's not similarity. They are not equal at all. So look at the next. And what dog would you imagine she needs? Maybe you have already an idea? Cocker Spania. Yes, she has a Cocker Spania. Next picture. You can see the both together. They are not equal, but they have resonance. And the next is a difference, <laughs> a different resonance. And your laughing shows that you already understand the resonance. You can see it. It's a different resonance. It's a more cur curiosity in both of their eyes and faces. We look at the next picture. So this is completely different resonance. It's more aggressive. And the next picture shows us more a noble resonance. And the next, it's more a little bit like depressive. And the next, completely different. And the next, <laughs> this is my sister-in-law when she was young with her cat. <laughs> and now you can understand a little bit the resonance. If you look at the pattern of the teeth, yeah, of course this is the natural pattern of the cat. And Andy has lost her number one teeth, so she looks alike. And that's why we think that this cat is laughing, although we know that cats never laugh. But you see her laughing, so you can realize the power of resonance. It makes you, think, makes you see things which are not there at all. If you look only at the cat, you maybe can see that she doesn't laugh like cats never do. The most important picture is the next. If you see these two men and this small boy, you can understand the main problem of pedagogic science. This our politicians have not understood. This is how children learn. They imitate their parents. And this small boy wants to be like his father and the very important friend of his father. And that's why he goes in this exactly same position. He wants to become alike. And if he does this all life long, this can happen. That's why we take these positions like the Buddha. If you make yoga asanas, we want to be like the Buddha. We hope for becoming Buddhas also inside. I am sitting there 45 years with Zen meditation, still hoping that the mind situation of the Buddha will come to me and last. I go on practicing. So this is resonance. That's why we want to go into an ashram, be near a guru, because we hope that by the resonance we can become alike. 
go in the same pattern or field. The next picture, you can even work on this. Yeah, this guy who sweeps the chimneys has made a good trick. Only once a year, the last round he makes before Christmas, he takes his little boy with him and they both have fun. It's nothing like child work or something. It's just collecting the tip in the last round before Christmas. And you can see he's smiling, the boy is smiling, they have fun together, a win-win situation. But also the client in the background is smiling. She has also fun. And she is expecting more money in the next year because the black man brings money into our life. And if he comes in this wonderful duet with his boy, she thinks even more money is coming. That's why she gives almost twice as much tip. That's pleasure to him. So it's a win, 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 win situation by using resonance. And nobody is damaged in this game because the lady gives twice as much money, but expecting so much more money, she will experience a self-fulfilling prophecy like this and will get much more money because she is expecting it. This is also resonance. So, next picture brings us already the basis of this to understand the archetypes which are so important. Remember, if you look at the university medicine, the medicine you are used to, they cannot do any prevention, although they talk about it. What they can do is to realize the problem very early. That is why they make mammography for the female breast. But they can't prevent breast cancer with this. What they do more and more is, pre is this form of early diagnosis. But real prevention, real prophylaxis, they can't do at all. Because they have no idea, no philosophy behind their work. They can't touch this level, which Platon talked about, of the ideas behind. You need this level to heal somebody. Otherwise, it can't work. So, if you want to do healing or real prevention, you need the archetypes. And, as I told you already, if you want your wishes, which you produce, a lot of on New Year's Eve. If you want them to work, you have to know the archetypes. Otherwise, it happens what happens every year. Although we could save the world with our wishes, our New Year wishes, mid-January, they are forgotten already because they don't work anyway. So, let's make an example. Uh, you know, maybe you know the story of Angelina Jolie, ex-wife of, ex of Brad Pitt. She has in, his, in her family this cancer story. Her sister died with 51 of ovarian can, uh, cancer. So she went to the University of Medicine, of course, most probably the very best they have in California. And what did they recommend to her? No real prevention. They recommended to cut off the breasts, cut off the ovaries, cut off the uterus, cut off everything which is female. So you needed no prophecy to, sell, to tell that the relationship would break up. This wouldn't work. But you could also ask, why did they stop? I mean, you can have cancer also at the stomach, and you can have it in the bones everywhere almost. So why don't you cut off, cut off everything else until they have in the end the brain with a lot of fear of brain cancer? This is the philosophy, the not existing philosophy of university medicine. This is a pity. And I'm quite, I'm quite happy that I studied medicine, but what they need, medicine needs also a philosophy. So we can be very happy that the other specialists are not functioning like the gynecologists. Otherwise, they would cut away everything. But can't happen because, and this is a very sad 
thin. They don't, they don't cut away organs which also exist in man. This is the protection we have. But you can see how poor this is. So what would have been real good for Angelina Jolie to make her understand what breast cancer or ovary cancer is meaning, what is saying to her. It's a question of growth, a very bad form of growth. But growth in itself is not bad. It's another archetype, the archetype number nine. Infection was number one, so the archetype number nine. And every politician wants growth, economic growth. We like children growing up and we make signs at the door posts and like this. We like our plants growing, our animals growing, our children, of course, growing. We like growth. But there's also, with every archetype, a destructive side. And this side is the growth of cancer. So, it would, much, would be much better if we develop through all our life a way of growth which is healthy. Yeah? It's okay to get taller and taller, but it's already not okay to get, even, uh, get more fat and fat. Growth in this direction is really dangerous. Every centimeter of growth in, this, in the belly area makes our chances to get Alzheimer's bigger. Like every hour of television you look, makes the chances of Alzheimer bigger. We have scientific proof for this. Every package of cigarettes you smoke makes the chances of Alzheimer 34% higher. So we know a lot of these things. This growth is already not quite okay. And the growth on orga in organs, that's what we call tumor, must not be cancer, but so a lot of them are cancer. Cancer growth is just a wrong direction of growth. So our task as doctors would be to tell people to grow on the level of this archetype. If you look at these at this archetypes, this question, Angelina Jolie, the breast, every woman knows the level, the archetypes on a textile level. So no woman would come with a breastfeeding bra to a rendezvous. They don't do that. They know rendezvous is for acquisition, for partnership. This is the archetype number seven. And breastfeeding is the archetype number four, nutrition for the child. So they don't mix up this. So wonderful advice for Angelina Jolie would have been to live a, a real courageous way of growth without any excuses and steps aside, really radical in these fields of partnership and motherhood. If you look at this from the viewpoint of this disease as a simple philosophy. So, if we look at this, we see in the middle the yin-yang symbol and take the next one. Ah, it's turning only. So, we, we see also four parts on this outer ring because you can make elements out of this yin-yang. Out of the yin, the female part, you can make the water element and the earth element, female elements. Out of the young, you have the male elements, fire and air. But with four elements, it's still not so easy to really help people. So we, we took every element and made three distinctions, three steps. You know, there's the water of the womb, very fertile situation. It's all the water of the sea, small lakes and creeks and it's female and child, inner child also. But there's also the water of the swamps, dangerous water, second step. And there's the water of the oceans, these vast 
transcendent level, Neptune, we call this. So if you do this with all elements, three steps, four elements, three steps, you have 12 archetypes. With these 12 archetypes, we can describe almost every situation. Yeah, we come back to cancer. You have this aggressiveness. This is first archetype of aggression. And you have this growth archetype, we said already, this is the ninth, number nine archetype. Jupiter, growth, expansion. And there we have the self-destruction in the end of cancer. This is number eight, self-destruction, plutonic archetype. So we have in cancer the destructive aspects of every of these archetypes. We have to transform it to the constructive archetype. That means this aggression thing, it's courage, decision making. Yeah, a courageous way of growth without excuses, a very radical way. This is the constructive way of the self-destruction. It's radical, coming to the roots, to the essential points. And you have the level where the cancer is happening. So if it's lung cancer, the most dangerous among the cancers, then it's a theme of communication, of contact, communion. And that would mean a prevention for lung cancer would be a very courageous growth away from the ego trip to the self-realization without any excuses in the field of communication. And with the breast cancer, as I said already, it would mean a courageous growth without excuses and sideways, very to the point and radical on these two levels of acquisition, partnership and motherhood. And this would have been very easy to tell Angelina Jolie because she lived this already. You have never heard any story about Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie because they lived a very liberal, open marriage, slept with whomever they wanted, but stayed together in love and had their children together. And she was very much into motherhood. She had own children and adopted some children and was living up to these two fields. And of course, if you want to become healthy on the fastest and directest way, it's also important to take the somatic part in. So I would of course have recommended to her a nutrition without any animal protein. The best thing you can do to prevent, to prevent cancer and also heart problems. So this is very easy and she is doing this on her own because doctors don't recommend this. Most doctors don't recommend this yet. Although there's so much scientific proof that peace food is the best way to feed yourself and everybody. And especially you should step away from all dairy products. Milk is the most dangerous cancer again on this earth, says Professor Colin Campbell, professor of Con or former professor of Cornell University. And there are so many scientific proofs that it's like this. So, psychosomatic medicine means you work on both levels, on the psychic level and on the somatic level. And there are more aspects, of course, on both levels. This was only an example. So, if you look at all these archetypes, please show us the next picture, and the next, and the next, and the next. You see maybe symbols you know from astrology. The astrologers used the same archetypes, but this need not disturb us. We just can tell them number one, two, three, until 12, like in the inner circle. With doctors, I recommend this. If they see these symbols, they more or less get some sort of craziness. But it's not important how we call them. Important is that we know them and you f that you find positive and constructive ways of living these archetypes. It's nothing bad with aggression, it's an archetype. And if we would live more courageously 
and more open to decision making, to confronting our problems in our body, the, the war most of you have in your body between your immune system and the things which come in, you, you take in. This war you could stop, and I would really strongly recommend you to stop this war. It takes so much energy away of you, so much happiness and life force. So, and still we could solve our problems in relationships if, if we confront them, we discuss them. We also have fights. Lately, I asked someone, what about your relationship? She said, oh, we have a beautiful relationship. We never fight. So I can tell her, you have no relationship, you want to tell me. No real relationship. It's not possible without fighting, without confrontation. I mean, if you, maybe if you take your one-eyed twin sister or brother, maybe then there is no real reason for fighting. But if you take, like we do, for different people, foreign people, there is reason to find the middle way to learn as a woman your animus in your partner and as a man your anima in your part partner. So if we do these confrontations on the consciousness level, we need not do them physically. It's not a very good thing if you fight physically, of course not. And especially not with children, but you should confront the problems, the complications with them. This is very healthy for both sides. And this is also in our world. We should confront the problems we have. And we have so many problems. Yeah, lately I was in Cyprus and diving there. If you look at the ground, it's okay. There are some plastics lying around between the rocks and the fishes. But if you look like this, you see only plastic. It's just filled up with plastic, this beach is there. And this is all over the place. It's even worse in Bali. I can tell you from my own experience. Horrible. So it's only one aspect we know this. We have so many problems. We should confront them. It's easy to confront them. All these climate problems we have, it's not the biggest problem. All these hunger problems we still have. I mean, now we have this strange situation from the seven and a half trillion people we have, or billion people we have on Earth, there's one, one trillion is still starving, or one billion, I think, is still starving, and two billions are already fat. So, or growing fat, this is the wrong thing. If people change our diets to animal protein-free diets, which I mean, you risk then a much longer life, much more healthy life, this option you have to take. But of course you could change, we could change the climate situation. We know with scientific proof that the climate destroying gases coming from the animal production are much worse than all the gases from the land vehicles like cars and lorries, and all the gases coming from the ships, container ships and cruise ships all together, and even the vehicles in the air, all the planes. The animal, the gases from the stomachs, this methane and things are worse. So we could change this. And of course we could stop this starving in the third world, in these poorest countries. Because now we take away their food to feed the animals in our countries. They are brought up here, okay, but not with the things you produced in Czechia or Germany or you, never in any country in Europe is importing these things. From where? All the rich countries are importing. And we take it from the poorest countries. So we, of course, responsibility for all the hunger going on there. John Ziegler from the, of the UNO, United Nations, tells us it would be easy possible to feed 15 billion people on Earth if we do it on a planned basis. But if we do it, go on doing it on this meat basis, then we cannot even feed 7.5 billion. And this only with a lot of war 
and trouble and complications all over. And of course, there's this animal question. And also, this is for a feeling person a difficult situation. So we would have solutions very near to us. And the main thing why this has become such a wave and now even a lifestyle in the German speaking countries at least is because it's also helping yourself so much. It's difficult to do anything more healthy for yourself than changing your diet for the better. I can tell you from my own experience that you can survive this easily. I'm now 67, or next week I'm, 50, I'm 67. So I didn't eat meat for more than 50 years now, and I don't eat any animal pro pro uh, protein since more than 10 years, and we even leave away gluten and other lectins. So it's, you're risking nothing. My nutrition now, if I'm in Tamanga, our center, is much better than it was all the time before. The risk is nothing, but you can have so much advantages on only this one point. Of course, it's also important that you have enough movement and you do a movement in this oxygen balance. And this is only important for yourself and you make meditation also very important for yourself, finding your, the middle of yourself, your center. Meditation and medicine, once wanted the same, that you come to, to your center or you be centered. Today, modern medicine is suppressing symptoms and this doesn't bring you to your center. And we can't put any, anything aside we can suppress almost everything in the first half of our life. Then there, the medicine, the allopathic medicine of university medicine is very effective. In the second half of life with all the chronic diseases, it's not effective at all, frankly speaking. So you could do general prevention by changing things. But on the other hand, it's never too late. It's never too late. I had a patient with 70 years, which came to, uh, to Tamanga, her center, and she had 40 years of rheumatism from her 30th birthday, more or less, and she had the strongest medicines you can imagine, Imorec, immune suppressive medicine, and metotrexate, this is even the cancer medicine, and still had pain. So. She was not really convinced of this fasting thing. And I, I, I told her that it wouldn't be easy for her because she had eaten so wrong all the time of her life. But she went with me through this with a lot of natural medicine and acupuncture of the ears and neuropathic therapy and all this. And after three days, she was really, really suffering from all the pain without any of these strong medicines anymore. But after six days, she was first time since decades, she was without pain. And she asked me what she can do to keep this state. And I told her, don't start the animal protein anymore. But she was not happy with this. She had her favorite dishes. She is from Vienna. And of course, she needed Buren wished and whatsoever. So she came back home and started eating meat and all this again, and the symptoms came back. So she remembered my words, stop this. And half a year later, she came back to the seminar and told me that's the first time since 40 years, a half a year without pain. This is just by, in her case, just by one week of fasting, changing the diet for the better. This is an option you all have. We all have. It's just, can we bring up the, bring this motivation? Can we see this picture of us to be in good shape, to have full energy and to live with this energy, doing the projects you like, you love? Imagine how much energy you need to keep down the shadow, yeah? to don't talk about the problems between you and your partner. It takes so much energy. You know this from experience. Yeah? If you have not solved the problem, 
and it's running with you in the underground or in the shadow, it takes every day more energy out of this system. So if you have a problem like an allergy and you take, of course, then medicine like cortisone to suppress the immune reactions and it takes a lot of energy out of you. Yeah, this is like a civil war in your body. Yeah, there's the immune system is fighting symbols like the salmon of the grass and the dust and things which are really harmless, but not from the symbol they have behind it. The dust is, of course, of course it's the shit of a small animal. Don't know the English word, milbe in German. So, and the salmon of the, the plants is, of course, salmon. This is what we call the, the poll, pollen. I don't know the English word either. So if you need all your energy to suppress this civil war and you take the suppressive energy of the cortisone together, being an allergic and using this medicine and it takes you away so much of your power. So imagine you get rid of this, the suppressive energy of the cortisone and the suppressive energy of your psyche to keep all these themes down which are behind it. And if you get rid of it, you will be like newborn. And I had this so often with patients. So I think you can see and imagine that's really in our responsibility. We can find answers. We have the ability to find answers to the things coming to us. And that's not only in respect to the medical problems, the symptoms and diseases, it's also in respect to our problems. We can also look behind the problems and see the archetypes or the pattern of archetypes behind it. And then we can find solutions. If we go away from the destructive level, we live in the illness, to a constructive level, we live in consciousness. And there are so many examples. I mean, you can take all the illnesses. And I just wrote a book about the old age. The old age is a present. So, of course, my theme. And I looked at the big of the illness of Alzheimer's, dementia, of course. If you look at it on a psychosomatic, from a psychosomatic viewpoint, it's a very simple thing. You know, maybe from the Bible, this sentence of Christ says, if you don't turn around and become like a child again, you can never reach the realm of God. Nowadays, most people are not interested in religion anymore, especially not in the Christian culture, and they don't want to turn around, they don't want to become like children. So you can think, okay, it doesn't interest me. I have no problem with that. But we don't have the choice. We don't have the choice if we turn around and become like children again. We have only the choice of the level. You can do that on a body level, then you become not like a child again, but you become childish. And the illness is called morbus Alzheimer. Or you do it on a consciousness level, like Christ meant it, I'm sure, or like Saint Exupéry, Antoine de Saint Exupéry meant it in the little prince, becoming this astonishing eyes, these curious eyes of this little guy who looks at this grown-up world from a chi child viewpoint. So we have to find this inner child. There's no choice. If we do it on a, on a consciousness level, it's perfect. And there's so much more joy coming into our life. If we don't do it on this level, we have a good chance to have it on a body level. That means becoming childish. And if you look at the development of Alzheimer's, it's completely the opposite way from a brain level than we had in the beginning of our life when we grow up into the whole, or almost a big part of our, 
the power of our brain. So you have this with every disease. If you look at the old man's heart disease, the heart insufficiency, people realize that they can't, can't climb a, a mountain again uh, anymore. Don't can, they can't climb a hill. Then they can't even get up the stairs. And in the end, they can't even walk for longer ways. And then they go to the doctor. He makes an x-ray and finds out the heart is much too big. And can you have a too big heart? From a cardiologic, yes. From a Christian logic, no. We need a big heart to, bring, to love ourselves. This is the main thing Christianity wants from us. Loving the next as yourself. So first, love yourself. Otherwise, it doesn't work with the next anyway. And then you have to love your enemies. A lot of people have a lot of, need a lot of space in their heart for this too. So we need a big heart, but of course, on the soul level, on the consciousness level, not on a physical level. On a physical level, this is a real bad thing. You can make it a little bit better by a natural medicine like Digitalis. This is a wonderful plant, but you can't heal it. But of course, you can't prevent this heart insufficiency by living up to this idea of a growing a big heart. You can also prevent, of course, the heart attacks, the high blood pressure heart attack, the stroke and all these things, angina pectoris. You will listen to your heart. It's just a question of time. If you don't think about your heart and you don't take care of all the themes of your heart, then the chances grow that we become a heart attack. And then everybody is listening to the heart. There is the intensive care thing, and maybe the helicopter is bringing you there, or the emergency car, and there's a lot of trouble around your heart. There's monitoring, and you can see the EKG and all this. Everybody is now focusing on your heart. But you can prevent this if you focus early on your heart. You look what, are the, what, what matters from your heart viewpoint. What are the wishes of your heart? And if you listen to your heart more often, if you're good, in, in good contact with your heart, if you listen to it voluntarily, best your whole life, you needn't have a heart attack. So you can play this game with every symptom, with every disease. And also with every problem. And if you look behind the problems, then you can also solve your wishes, like on New Year's Eve. If you say, okay, in the next year, uh, instead of shouting at the children, clapping at the, ch clapping the children, and being aggressive with my wife, I want take care of the cows on my working desk. Nobody will be against this. This is perfect, but it doesn't work because the archetypes behind are completely different. Behind shouting the children and your partner, this is aggression, first archetype. But clearing the cows, looking for order and orderly situations, this is archetype number 10. And you can't take the one for the other. But instead of shouting and even hitting, you can, of course, play squash. I mean, this is a quite primitive level, but still it, it helps. If you go four times a week doing squash with your children, you need not shout so much with them. You power yourself out in this, bit, uh, in this cement case where this game is played. And the better thing would be you do more courageous thinking and you look for more courageous solutions. You go for confrontation where it's important. You look at the important points, also those who give you pain to solve them with a much better thing. And such a wish can work. And I experience this often with people.
So there are so many examples, and I know you need examples to experience this. I'm happy that there are lots of books translated into your language. I think this is the country with the third most translations after Hungary and Italy, and much more than in the English speaking world. So you can look at this. I can't do anything in your language, but I do some things in English if you're interested, like sometimes webinars. Or in September, I go to Omega and Esalen Center in New York and California, but maybe for the Americans. I met some Americans here also. So I would be happy if you dive in deeper into this philosophy. I know from my own experience and with the experience with patients in 40 years that it works really well, but it needs your own responsibility. Without this, nothing is working, and nobody will suffer for you, and no professor will die for you. This they leave any time to you. So better take early the responsibility for your life and everything connected with your life, also the problems and the diseases. They are good steps to health, to happiness. This I would wish you. Thank you for your <laughs> listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk and also for your books, audio books and your, and your work. So we have a couple of minutes. So if there are some questions, two questions, you can ask now. Ready? Thank you. Uh, thank you how you handle with technical problems. Uh, I have a question. You show the circle of archetypes uh, with numbers, and I would like to know how you count the archetypes or according to what scheme or something, some information. This thank system you. is very old. It's more or less timeless. You can feel it. Uh, you can find it also with the, in the Sumerian culture. I don't know the real origin. It's a very old one. You know, people always knew yin and yang female and masculine and the step to the elements was very near the step to the 12 archetypes was taken in the antique world and culture and i don't know the real origin of this but you know there's an archetype system you know and is very well accepted these are is a system of mendeleev these are more than 100 elements in the physical world and there's no physicist and no chem chemic, chemic guy who has any doubt on this. These 12 archetypes are much more symbolic and much more connected to culture. But the real origin, we do not know. OK, thank you. And the last question, the second and the last, if there is. Mm -hmm. You were talking about uh, about a lady and uh, change their uh, her diet. It helped her, so it was just in her case. But uh, you can you can heal this uh, rheumatism in every case. No, we can't heal anything. Every case, there's no hundred percent in medicine but we can make the chances much, much better by changing diet and even still better by taking the psychic level into it also. 100% in medicine doesn't exist and whoever tells you, it's, who is he is lying at you, but we can make our chances much better. Mm -hmm. And if, if we can have the, not, the next picture, I show you for the first question, a quite nice answer. We live in a world of pattern, yeah? So if you could produce it on the screen, then we could have an idea of these patterns, that they are really timeless. 
Is it possible? Now we have it here, but it's missing on the screen. Yes. And then just go on, one after the other. What you see there are numbers. And we say these are the Arabic numbers. But look at the number four. It's on the wing of a butterfly. All these numbers, yeah, go on, are on the wings of butterflies. And they are there since millions of years. So maybe these numbers are not so Arabic at all. You just go on all the time. And this Swedish guy who made these photos, look at our letters now. We call these letters Latin letters. But since they are on the wings of butterflies since hundreds of thousands of years, they are not Latin. They are just patterns. And we live in a cosmos. And this cosmos has rules. And it's better to understand these rules instead of living and learning only from our errors. We could just realize that we are not living in a chaos. We're living in this cosmos. We don't know where these letters coming from. But we can find them there on the wings of the butterflies. We can know for sure that they are there since very, very long time in this cosmos. You just go on to the last. Yeah. And you, yeah, and one more even. Yeah, you could put this in the, ch in the children's rooms when they have to learn this, to give them a feeling we're living in a cosmos. You go one more, go, you see it on stones here. A friend find, found all the letters and now also the numbers on stones, the stones of Italy. And go back to the other end. No, this is not. This is a nice picture to give you an idea that there are timeless things like the law of fate and the archetypes. We know they are there. We can work very well with them, although we do not really know how someone up there or down there, Mother Earth, or I don't know, the evolution, God, I don't know. You can tell it, call it how you want. But there was a higher institution who gave us these symbols. And the butterfly wings make it very clear. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Rudy Gregalke. Thank you for the introduction. And the technicians, of course, <laughs> they finally found the solution. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize to the technicians if we finally made it possible. We need them, of course, in our days to find those old knowledge things, <laughs> the wisdom of decades, of centuries, of billions of years. Thank you. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Very much.